Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Eating the Holy Bible. I'm your teacher, Miss Crystal Ross, and I'm coming back for an upload because we were interrupted. So today I want to go over our order of our program, and that is we start off with, yes, the introduction, and then we get into our song service selection, which today will be um, originally sang by Miss Kiera Sheard, and um, Party Time Karaoke Topic is the resource. Also, after that, we will get into our scriptural portion of the lesson, which is coming from 1 Samuel chapter 11, where we talk about King Saul, and then we're going to do our commentation and summarization, and then we're closing in prayer. So let's get into our song for tonight. Indescribable. Let's start it over. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creations revealing a majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful. Untamable, all struggle we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God. <clears throat> Who sees the lightning books and tells them where they should go? Sees heavenly storehouses laden in snow. Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light? Yet concealed it to bring us the coolness of night. No one can fathom incomparable. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struggle we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. You are amazing, God. Uncomparable, unchangeable. You've seen the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. Cause you are amazing. All 
struggle, we fall to our knees and we all be proclaimed. You are amazing, God. Incomparable, unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. I said you are amazing, God. How many can say he's amazing? Testimony that is amazing. Oh, he sees beyond the mask, he's amazing. For in beyond the dark, he's amazing. Yeah. He's holding our hand as we're going through. When no one else will love you is amazing, yeah. And he won't tell you secrets, he's amazing, yeah. I'm a father, you're amazing, you're amazing. Your reach is amazing. Your love is amazing. Your cover is amazing. The author of my soul, you are amazing. Amen. <laughs> All right. And that does yay, conclude our song service for today. That was Indescribable by Miss Kier Shear. She's now married. So he is amazing. And it's time to get into our scripture for today. I'm going to go right on ahead on over to Bible Gateway. Well, we'll start with 1 Samuel chapter 11 of the New Living Translation of the Holy Bible. I hope you are ready to read along with me if you can. Saul defeats the Ammonites. Chapter 11 says, about a month later, y'all ready? King Nahash of Ammon led his army against the Israelite town of Yabesh Gilead. But all the citizens of Yabesh asked for peace. Make a treaty with us and we will be your servants, they replied. All right, Nahash said, but only on one condition. I will gouge out the right eye of everyone as a disgrace to all of Israel. Give us seven days to send messengers throughout Israel, replied the elders of Yabesh. If no one will come to save us, then we will agree Unto your terms. When the messengers came to Gebeah of Saul and told the people about their plight, everyone broke into tears. Saul had been plowing a field with his oxen, and when he returned to his town, he asked, What's the matter? Why is everyone crying? So they told him about the message from Yabesh. Then the Spirit of God came powerfully upon Saul. And he became very angry. He took two oxen and cut them into pieces and sent messages, messengers to carry them throughout Israel with this message. This is what will happen to the oxen of anyone who refuses to follow Saul and Samuel into battle. And the Lord made the people afraid of Saul's anger, and all of them came together as one. When Saul mobilized them at Bezek, he found that there were three hundred men of Is from Is three hundred thousand excuse me men from Israel and thirty thousand men from Judah. Judah. So Saul sent the messengers back to Yabesh Gilead to say, 
We will rescue you by noontime tomorrow. There was great joy throughout the town when that message arrived. The men of Yabesh then told their enemies, tomorrow we will come out to you and you can do to us whatever you wish. But before dawn the next morning, Saul arrived. Having divided his army into three detachments, he launched a surprise attack against the Ammonites and slaughtered them the whole morning. The remnant of the army army was so badly scattered that no two of them were left together. Then the people exclaimed to Samuel, now there were, there were those, excuse me, now where are those men who said, why should Saul rule over us? Bring them here and we will kill them all. But Saul replied, no one will be executed today. For today, the Lord has rescued Israel. Then Samuel said to the people, come, let us all go to Gilgal to renew the kingdom. So they all went to Gilgal and in a solemn ceremony before the Lord, they made Saul their king and they offered peace offerings to the Lord. That's on the altar. And Saul and the Israelites were filled with joy. Isn't that something to be glad about? It's 6 59 p.m. 2 4 2021. Happy Thursday, and thank you so much for joining me. It's now time to get into our commentation and summarization portion of this lesson. And what I want to say is that Saul, the new king, was used by the Almighty God to save his people. When God saved his people, oh, there was a plight. The plight was, oh, save us, Israel, because we are being bullied into being someone's servant. That's even talking about gouging out our right eye. And for what reason? They want the land back. They want us to be their servants. Oh, they'd be happy about it. But we believe there is a greater one. We believe that the God we serve will indeed help us. So in seven days time, the new leader Saul was given power from on high to deliver his people with a war plan. He had 3,300,000 people from Israel and Judah encamped against the people of Ammon. The people of Ammon were Ammonites and they were the people of Nahash who was their king. So from one king to another, we had a king who wanted more servants. And remember, the people of Israel were to be servants to Saul once he's made king, but there hasn't been yet an official ceremony. The king has been named, but now the king is going to show you who's king and why he was chosen. He fearlessly cut up two. He fearlessly had cut up two oxen and said, Messengers, send this to my army. Let them know I will do this to their oxen if they do not come and help the people of Israel with me on today. If they don't join Saul and Samuel in battle. Samuel was the high priest at the time. The son of Eli by adoption given by Penina. Penina and Elkanah, his wife, uh, her husband, to serve in the house of the Lord. <clears throat> Samuel was a prophet. They needed Samuel. Samuel would uh, offer, Samuel would pray, offer sacrifices, whatever you need to do to get in touch with God. <clears throat> Saul had a war plan to surprise attack the Ammonites. Oh, we're not going to let you know when we're coming. We're coming. Just know that we're coming. And as a matter of fact, that message was only given unto the Israelites, their brothers and sisters, not told to their enemy. 
So the enemy had no idea that a surprise attack was coming to their camp and they were caught off guard. They chased them out of the camp, leaving no two of them together. They scattered them. They slaughtered them the whole morning. So, the people of Yabesh Gilead were saved on that day because they reached out to the people in Gebeah where Saul lived. Had they heard that Saul was being made king and where to send their message to? Well, <clears throat> maybe, well, we do know that's where Saul was. And we do know that the people knew who their king was. So it looks like they were looking for Saul. So Saul defeated, again, I'm going to say it, the Ammonites, King Nahash, who had been gouging out the eyes of the Israelites for some time now. As it was said in um, the previous chapter. So... What is the lesson that we have learned on today that we can take away and apply to our own lives? The lesson that we can take away and apply is that <clears throat> help me, Holy Ghost. the leaders that um, have been set in charge. Um, now, this is for the people of God. So the leaders who have been set in charge. We ought to call upon our leaders for help. We don't have to fight our battles alone. Okay, how do we break this down into something that matters or means means something to us? How do we apply that to us? <clears throat> the Bible says in the, in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Um, at this time, the Israelites were targeted. They targeted one group because, you know, the Israelites were in various parts of the land. So it sounds like they were a little bit further from their brothers and sisters. So they needed to say, hold up, wait a minute, before we make a decision, before we give in, give us time. And they took that time to reach out for greater numbers. They took that time to let their people know we, we are in a plight. They talking about gouging out our eyes and we becoming their people, their ser we become their service and won't be able to help you any longer. And when Saul, <clears throat> their uh, uh, new uh, uh, anointed or chosen king, had heard about this and saw the people crying, it touched his heart and he became angry. He wanted to protect his people. So he <clears throat> began to call for his people in numbers to protect God's people. And this happened. So on today, if we are in need of help, we, we can call on our allies, our other people, uh, people of God, friends, family, in any situation, call out for help before we surrender. Before we surrender into something. And, and, and talk to people. Uh, talk to people so that they give you time to make up your mind. If they say, at least have a conversation before you give in. Before you, even though the Israelites offered up that they be servants. Because they were afraid of their enemies. They were smart enough to say, hey, okay, we'll be a servants if after seven days we've come up with no other solution to this dilemma. And there was a solution for they had help from their people. And we need to remember, though, the people um, in our lives that God has in place for us, our friends, our family members, our church members, our co-workers, whoever it is that God has there to help us. 
leaders. It could be your pastor. It could be elders. It could be deacons. It could be missionaries, evangelists, whoever. <clears throat> we can go to for help and know that we don't have to endure and be taken, it, um, taken asunder or taken advantage of because we feel helpless or we feel weak. We feel uh, targeted. We don't have to feel alone because we are members of a greater body. We are members of a body, of the body of Christ, fitly joined together. So we know that we, the arm is not alone. It's just, the arm is attached. The foot is attached. The head is attached. The torso, the 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 chest, the buttocks, all that legs. To make a body. And every joint supply it. So. We are not alone. We, we do have. Family to call. We have loved ones. Friends. God will place people. He will put people in front of you. Put people in your life at your point of need. Because he says. When the enemy comes in like a flood. I will lift up a standard against him. What is the other scripture that I also had in mind? Um, when we're weak, he is strong. He tells us to uh, seek counsel for where there's the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So call upon the elders. Call upon people when you are in need and when you are in need of help. If you feel if you, feel you are outnumbered, <clears throat> take some time ask for the time to sort it out get it together get your strength get your strength before you come and try to face uh, a battle head on alone I'm going to go ahead and close with that uh, there's no more questions comments or concerns our hearts and minds will close but I know it's just <laughs> it just be but I want to go ahead and pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the scripture lesson on today. Thank you so much for an opportunity to come back and um, upload. We're thanking you for um, the gospel that's being spread and the teaching that is going forth throughout the land from the body of Christ. May every joint supply it. Um, even the greatest is the is the biggest servant, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we can each be your ministers. We can each minister um, the gospel to those who are in need, adding to the body of Christ, Lord. We're asking you that you prepare us for battle, that you will strengthen us, that you will encourage us, and that you will build us up and give us everything that we need. Because you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory, which are also in Christ Jesus. Forever and ever, we praise you and we thank you, O oh God, this day. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you for watching. I hope that you have a pleasant uh, Thursday evening. Come on back and I'll see you again on tomorrow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bye, y'all.